Being an old man in the current world sucks. You don't know how far you are going to make it with your cancer. No respect from younger generations and the gap between what you wanted to achieve and what you are now is killing you from inside while you are barely making a living and hardly can drive. After all this, you start to think would anyone even cry for you if you die? But you suddenly have an accident with a spaceship and the drunk alien drivers give you a new body cause they broke yours. I guess spaceships aren't that strong like truck cunt to esekai you. That's so pathetic. Our story starts with an old man, Ishiro, a man whose age has taken a toll on his driving skills, as well as his family's relocation to a new home. Upon arriving at the house, his daughter Mary expresses her astonishment at the place. But the garage door opens, and the real owner of the house drives out. He introduces himself and asks if they are the new neighbors. After his leaves, much to the family's disappointment, they discover the actual condition of the house. Inside, Marie, Ishiro's wife, suggests going out for a meal while Ishiro unpacks by himself due to his lower back pain. During the unpacking process, he finds a letter in his back pocket, which indicates the need for a follow-up examination. The following day, on his way back from work, Ishiro comes across an abandoned puppy inside an empty cardboard box. Without hesitation, he decides to bring it home, despite his family's disapproval, claiming that he will keep it in his room. He feeds it and gives it a name, Hanako, and takes the dog for a walk to the doctor's office the next day. Ishiro receives devastating news about his health. The doctor reveals that he has stomach cancer and only has three months to live. Heartbroken, he attempts to contact his family, but his calls go unanswered and are ignored. Upon returning home, Ishiro once again tries to share the news, but his family brushes him off. Feeling neglected, he takes Hanako for a walk, contemplating whether his family would even care or shed tears if they knew about his condition. In a park, overwhelmed with emotions, he breaks down and embraces his only true companion, Hanako. In that vulnerable moment, there is a teenager nearby them, but suddenly the reality distorts and a spaceship comes out of the void and crashes into them. While Hanako remains unharmed, the old man can't feel anything but only creatures are communicating via a neural network. The ship is undamaged but they killed two intelligent beings. They have to fix them fast before the space ploys catches this. One of them objects saying we have only military tools, but other says we have to fix the bodies anyway, or we gonna get caught. The following morning, Ishiro awakens surprisingly refreshed. During breakfast, he notices a change in taste and somehow he develops a significant thirst. No matter how much he drinks he can't get enough. On his way to his follow-up doctor's appointment, he realizes that his back pain has disappeared. Additionally, when accidentally bumped into, he realizes that his glasses no longer contain lenses, yet his vision remains clear. During another x-ray, the images show only a white void surrounding his body, leading the doctors to believe their machine is malfunctioning. During his journey home, he begins feeling nauseous and discovers that his phone has turned into a blank screen, further unsettling him. Back in his room, he smashes his phone, revealing no electronic components but only an empty casing. Suddenly, his arm emits steam, sending him into a panic. Then it comes back to normal after a while and makes him feel weird, and wants to discover what's wrong with his body with only Hanako around him. Eventually, he discovers a peculiar spot beneath his chin that, when pressed, unveils his true nature as a cyborg, and then he checks every single spot till he comes to a conclusion. That's not his old man body. Later that night, he revisits the crash site, questioning his newfound identity and pondering whether he can even be considered human anymore. Nearby, there are a group of teenagers surrounded a homeless man. The homeless man starts begging them to stop as he knows what they are going to do, but they start attacking him with fireworks that got the man caught on fire while they were cheering and didn't stop at all. Ishiro can see and hear what's happening but he doesn't want to get in trouble cause of a man he doesn't even know. But he changes his mind and steps in to stop this reckless gang. But they surround him armed with baseball bats, and starts hitting him non-stop till he falls down unconscious. They assume he's dead and doesn't care then turn their attention to the homeless man again. However, Ishiro's automatic defense systems activate, identifying all the teenagers and firing warning shots to scare them. Meanwhile, his system recorded the incident and provides detailed information about the attackers and posted it on the internet, and streamed it online at the same time. The whole world knows of their actions that night. Later, the homeless man sincerely expresses his gratitude to Ishiro, leaving a deep impact on him. Afterward, Ishiro falls down while shaking, and tears start falling down from him recognizing that this is his humanity. 
he didn't lose it at all. The next day, at a nearby school, Ishiro's daughter was talking with her friends while another boy was looking at her saying she's pretty, but his friend replies she has a bad character. His name is Hiro. He notices that his friend Ando has been absent recently due to bullying issues. Concerned, he goes to visit Ando's home and goes directly to his room. He finds him still under his cover and doesn't replay whatever he says. Suddenly tears drop down from him, and he makes an excuse, saying that this week's chapter of One Piece manga is emotional. Hiro starts saying that Ando's actions recently are more suspicious like he's hiding something he does in the shadows, and with a serious face accuses Ando of being the serial killer that has been reported recently while looking him in the eyes. But he starts laughing and says it's a joke. Hiro introduces himself as someone different, showcasing a cool trick he has learned, astonishing Ando. He asks how he did it, thinking it might be a magic trick. Hiro refuses to explain and suggests going outside for a walk. Outside, Hiro points his hand to a group of crows and says let me show you a cool trick. By mimicking a gunshot, he manages to make the crows fly away. Ando says he knows that trick because crows are intelligent creatures that assume you are a threat. Hiro corrects him, saying look again, and he shoots the crow dead. They visit a local TV store, and Hiro shows Ando and cool trick. He replaces the stock footage on the screens with men of culture type of content, getting the store employees in serious trouble with uncultured parents. Ando can't stop laughing and being amazed by Hiro's tricks, but Hiro says he still has one trick left and it's the best. Hiro guides Ando to a busy street where, like a conductor, he orchestrates a multitude of car accidents, causing chaos and collisions. His friend is astounded by this, realizing that it is not a mere magic trick. But Hiro doesn't stop till he destroys the street totally. Later that night at Ando's house, Hiro reveals his full cyborg body and convinces Ando to come back to school, saying that if anyone bullies him again, he'll just talk to them in an American way. On his way home, Hiro blindly spins in a circle in the middle of a street and picks a house at random, letting himself in, where he, using the finger gun from earlier, mercilessly kills everyone inside, mother, father, and child. After, he says I don't know why people hate series killers, I finally feel alive. Their daughter arrives home, calling out to her mother and walking into the kitchen, where she finds her dead body. In shock, she backpedals into the hallway, finding Hiro standing there, menacingly. He tells her to take a seat and that they're going to have a chat. She asks what he wants. He asks her what kind of manga she reads. She hesitantly responds, One Piece and Attack on Titan. Oh, so you like Nami b****? Fearful, she asks him if her younger brother and father are dead too. Why does it matter now? We're talking One Piece. She begs him not to kill her. Elsewhere we see Ishiro begin to scan the area listening to see if anyone needs help till he hears the girl crying out for her life. Ishiro immediately gets in his car, trying to make his way over to her. However, he gets stuck behind a bus and can do nothing but listen to the sounds of her pleading for her life, until Hiro puts an end to it. A short time later, Ishiro finds the house and is devastated upon seeing the carnage. He thinks to himself that this is unforgivable, why would anyone do such a thing? We hear Hiro talking to himself, saying that he must have somehow missed their grandpa. Without missing a beat, he shoots Ishiro in the head, knocking him to the ground, and begins to walk out of the house. As he walks away, Ishiro makes his way out of the house. Sensing this, Hiro turns around, wondering what the hell he is, then quickly flies away. Ishiro realizes that he must have been the other one who was there the night they were crashed into. A few days later, on his way home from work, Ishiro sees a group of thugs cut in front of a bunch of people waiting in line for a taxi. One of the salarymen waiting politely tells them that there's a line, but the thugs feels insulted by this, drags the man into a nearby alley, with Ishiro following close behind. The man asks the dudes if they want money. When they say it's too late for that now, they're going to kill him. The man apologizes and begs for forgiveness, saying he has a wife and child. They, however, don't care and just want to fight. They're just about to throw a punch when Ishiro speaks up, telling the man to get to safety and that he will handle it from here. He takes a fighting stance and releases a battle scream. The thugs all start laughing at him. He gets kneed in the stomach but counters by making the thug do a sick flips. Then, the rest of them start attacking him as well. And while Ishiro doesn't really have the best form, all he really needs is one good hit to send them flying back, knocking them out. It doesn't take long until all the thugs are dealt with, and the Salaruman thanks Ishiro for saving his life, with Ishiro responding he's just glad he's okay. 
As he walks off, he again begins to listen in for any trouble in the surrounding area. When he hears the screams of a family in a house fire, he gets worried he'll be too late again, and he remembers that Hiro somehow flew away, so he should be able to do that too. He desperately tries to get it to work, but can't quite figure it out, until he starts singing the Astro Boy themed song. Opening his back and revealing the jets, he blasts off. At first, he has a hard time controlling the jets, but eventually reaches the burning house. He goes inside, pulling out the father, and after asking if anyone else is inside, the grandmother. The father thanks him, to which he says there's no need. He then asks them to please not mention anything about him to the police, or anyone else, then he walks off. Once Ishiro makes it far enough away, he start crying saying thank god, I'm so happy I could save them all. Elsewhere Hiro convinces Ando to come to school, and to stop just staying in his room all day, saying that he'll fulfill his promise. Once at school, the bullies eventually find out that Ando has come back. They start trying to drag him up to the rooftop to beat him up again. When Hiro intervenes, telling them to knock it off, one of them tells Hiro that he's coming too, putting his hands on his head. Hiro grabs his hand with that gorilla grip, forcing him down onto the ground, telling him to apologize to Ando, and to say that they will never come near him again. The bully reluctantly does so, much to the shock of all of his friends. Later that day after school, Hiro takes Ando up to the school's rooftop, handing him a pair of binoculars and telling him where the bullies are. Ando tries to find them, and he hears Hiro saying, Bah, bah. Ando asks him what he's doing, but he sees it, Hiro has shot the bullies, dead. The dude literally did it the American way. As they walk home, Hiro elaborates on his full abilities, that he can tap into all internet messaging services, fully control all electronics, and could probably even send a nuke from the USA to China with ease if he wanted to. That afternoon, Ando tells Hiro that he can't be friends with him anymore. He can't be friends with someone who kills so casually, and tells him not to come near him ever again. Hiro doesn't really understand why any of that would bother him but agrees to his request, telling him to just not skip school anymore before walking off. Elsewhere, on his walk home from work, Ishiro walks past a cat with a little kitten beside it on the street, and this makes him think that he should take Hanako for a walk, but he hears a car behind him hit something, and sees the cat got hit. He immediately runs over to try and help, not knowing whether it would be faster to fly or run to the nearest veterinarian. He then senses that he may be able to do something, he places the cat back down and begins to heal the animal's injuries. It opens its eyes and appears to be completely fine. Before they walk off, immediately after this, he makes his way to a nearby hospital and begins to heal as many people afflicted with cancer and other life-threatening conditions as he can. In the dark side of the city, the Yakuza boss got tired of these low-quality checks that couldn't enjoy drugs with him. He's angry and calls the gang to throw out the body and tell them to bring a better one. Later in the sauna, he goes directly to the gang member and uses him as a temporary option till he gets him a new one. You know what they say, if there is a hole there is a way. The gang later goes on a search for a woman that fits the boss's taste. No one would love to give his boss a head if they took more time. And they manage to find a pretty girl, they pulls her into the car and runs away. The girl wakes up in a strange room to find herself drugged, and the boss comes closer to her saying I'm gonna make you mine but she quickly reacts and smashes his nose and runs out of the room. He goes after her to see her holding a katana and starts attacking him. He easily dodges her attacks and mocks her, but she manages to cut a vein in his hand and blood starts flooding out of it everywhere. The gang comes in and goes to save their boss, and she takes this chance, takes a piece of cloth, and runs away. She goes home and stays in her boyfriend's hug, shaking in fear, and they both start thinking about what to do, should they call the cops. But they get a message on the phone saying if you tell the cops, we will kill your family. And it didn't take time till the gang broke into their house. The boyfriend stands up for his girl and tries to offer them money at first. But they keep mocking him, so he starts raising the amount of money and begs them to just leave them alone. But, the boss grabs him by the neck and pulls him up and the girl starts attacking him to save her love. But he keeps tightening his fist till the dude dies. But suddenly one of them is sent flying inside and crashes the table. But when they look back they see an old man attacking them. Ishiro sends the Yakuza members flying by his attacks till he reaches the boss and grabs him by both arms and the boss keeps attacking him with fists, but nothing works, till he grabs out his gun and shots Ishiro but it doesn't affect him, so he keeps shooting him non-stop till Ishiro finally falls to the ground. 
When Ashiro wakes, his system scans the area first, then he opens his eyes. He sees the dude from earlier beside him, and attempts to check to heal him with his abilities but it doesn't work. He checks his heartbeats, but the dude is dead. He freaks out and starts crying calling for God to help. He promised to save as many lives as he can. A loser like me failed to save this poor one. Help me fulfill my promise. He keeps doing it till the dude finally opens his eyes. The dude starts crying blaming his fate and why they got to deal with the Yakuza. And why humans think they can decide people's fate. Ashiro sees a phone drop nearby and grabs it to make a call. Once he hears the voice he was waiting for. He tells him I will make sure you don't hurt anyone ever again. Ishiro flies directly to the signal he located and lands there smoothly, pushing the guards away, till he makes his way to the main room of the Yakuza's boss's meeting. The tan-skinned dude says he's my guest and takes Ishiro to the next room. Ishiro tries to ask him to bring the girl back and stop harming this young couple, but the boss is bored from his speech and pulls his gun and starts shooting him non-stop again till he's out of bullets. Then Ishiro stands and comes at him. He tries to hit him but it doesn't work till Ishiro makes him do some sick flips till he hits the ground. Ishiro asks him where the girl is, but the boss says he's gonna make him pay for this with his family and the people close to him. Ishiro realizes that there is no hope. But suddenly the gang comes of sudden and rains Ishiro with bullets. The ran of bullets doesn't stop at all till Ishiro opens his laser battery. The gang stops wondering what this is in front of them. But Ishiro starts slowly flying and then suddenly releases the full power of the laser battery. Direct laser shots kept flying everywhere hitting its target till he totally eliminated the whole Yakuza. After Ishiro wakes up and sees the Yakuza bodies still around him, so he stands up and tells them with a loud voice that Selfie's creature like them doesn't deserve to die immediately. They no longer will be able to do anything by themselves. Even the simple stuff, you won't even be able to see your children or grandchildren. And this isn't even close to the damage you did to other human lives. May time let you regain your humanity or either you die like a disgusting being like who you are now. Then he goes back to the big dude again, who doesn't stop complaining but Ishiro ignores him and grabs his phone then calls the last number he called again. He locates the girl's location and assures her that her boyfriend is still alive. After he cleans the way they go out but he says I don't have money for a taxi. So he grabs her, releases his jets, and fly to the sky. A few days go by, and Ando continues to hear news about families dying from what appears to be gunshot wounds, but without any evidence of a gun being used. He calls the police, but can't bring himself to rat out Hiro. He tries to do some research about how Hiro became the way he is, when he reads a news story about miracles that have been happening all over Tokyo lately, about patients with serious illnesses having found themselves suddenly and inexplicably cured. He thinks back to when Hiro healed his paper cut immediately. He wonders if it's him doing this, saving some people's lives while continuing to kill others, but concludes that that's not something he would do. He then thinks that there must be someone else out there who has the abilities Hero does, but is doing the exact opposite and helping people instead of hurting them, not knowing how he could find out if this person even exists for sure. He remembers Hero telling him that he can hear everything everyone says around him, no matter how quiet. Ando then starts yelling for help around his room, saying that someone is going to kill him. And nothing happens. When the doorbell to the house rings, we hear a confused Ishiro talking to Ando's mother, asking if they're okay. Ando races downstairs and outside, and is amazed that there really is another person like Hiro. He asks Ishiro that he's shirtless because he flew here, right? Much to the confusion of Ishiro, who asks him how he knew that. Ando invites him into his room and asks him if he's a cyborg. Ishiro is shocked, but Ando tells him that his childhood friend is the same. He asks Ando if he knows what Hiro is doing, and Ando admits that he does. Ishiro says that what he's done is unforgivable. Ando then asks him about the miracles happening in hospitals around Tokyo, wondering if that's his doing. He begins to tear up and calls him a real-life superhero, and asks him to please stop Hiro, that he will help him in any way he can. Ishiro admits that he might have to end up killing his childhood friend. Then he asks Ando if he still wants to help. He replies saying that he isn't the same hero that he grew up with, now he's just a monster. Ishiro admits that the main reason he's been helping people and saving lives is because he's been too scared to face the possibility that he may have become some monstrous, soulless machine now too. Ando says he's more human than anyone he's ever met, and would be willing to give his life to be able to do anything that can help him. 
The next day after school, a classmate of Hiro, Shin Watanabe, runs up to him, saying that she saw him stand up for Ando the other day in class, and confesses that she has feelings for him, but Hiro says thank you and walks away leaving her confused. Later that night, as he's going to bed, Hiro's mother says that she needs to tell him something. She explains that she went to the hospital earlier that day, and after some hesitation, tells him that she has pancreatic cancer, and it seems to have spread to her lungs as well. She tells him that she's only been given about a month to live, and there's nothing that the doctors can do and says when she's gone he can go and live with his father and their family. But please don't drop out of high school. He hugs her crying, says he won't ever let her die. But she doesn't know he means that literally. Meanwhile, Endo goes with Ishiro to a vacant junkyard to train his combat abilities. They assemble a stack of compacted metal to use as target practice. Except Ishiro only knows how to use his fists. It takes a while, but with Ando remembering the things that Hiro had told him about how his body works they manage to trigger his arm into a full cannon, which after shooting erases the compacted metal and leaves a deep hole behind. The next morning, Hiro and his mother are watching the news about the recent murder of families. She says how could anyone be so horrible, someone like that should be sent straight to hell. Hiro asks her, what if it was him who did it? She says that she would follow him into the grave. Later at school, Hiro receives a phone call, and apparently now he just uses his hand, pretending he has a phone from his mother telling him that a miracle happened and she is now cancer-free. Later that night Hiro makes a promise to himself, from here on out he is going to stop killing people, he's done with it. When the morning comes, the doorbell to the house is ringing. His mother goes and opens it, but a police storm inside the house and Hiro runs out the back door, only to be completely surrounded by a dozen cops and they all attack him together and begin holding him down, and he can hear his mother crying asking what's going on. When he effortlessly throws all of the cops off of himself and begins running away, once out of view, he activates his jets and flies off. After he lands, he taps into the news stations and can see he's been reported on all over Japan stating that he is the one responsible for the home invasions and murders that have been occurring. Nearby, Shin finds him and lets him stay with her at her grandmother's house, thinking that he must have been framed for the murders. Elsewhere, Ando is teaching Ishiro how he can integrate his phone into his body, using knowledge Hiro told him. He instructs Ishiro to rub his finger over a USB port, just like he's trying to scan it, and then disturbingly lifts his fingernail, which now has the scanned USB port in it. Ando connects the phone, and Ishiro's phone appears in front of his eyes. He sets up a phone number, so now Ando can communicate with him hands-free while he's flying. They begin to test it out. Ishiro flies up high, and they can still hear each other fine. Ando tells him to go up even further. Ishiro reaches plane cruising altitudes and it still works. He goes up even further and reaches the International Space Station, telling Ando he's been found out, still hearing him just fine. Ishiro then flies back down. At the same time Hiro were crying, while watching the news in his eyes. News reporters have found out where his mother lives and are barraging her with questions. She says that her son has done something no human should ever do and as a parent she doesn't know how she can truly take responsibility for his actions. He goes to the internet text board, 2chan, and reads comments insulting his mother, the police, and himself. Elsewhere, Ando is also on the same board reading the comments. He has a bad feeling about what Hiro might do. Later that night, as Hiro is going to sleep, he is watching a comedy, when breaking news reports that, the mother of the serial killer, Hiro Shishigami, has committed suicide. Distraught, he emotionlessly makes his way outside, and then he flies high into the sky, crying and screaming with the all air in his lungs. The next day, news reporters barrage the house of Hiro's father, asking him all kinds of questions when Hiro shows up. Blaming them for his mother's suicide, he lets out his rage, and he also upgraded his gat to a machine gun, killing everyone there except his father. He dips out. While walking the streets aimlessly, he continues to read posts on 2chan, which are making fun of his mother's suicide. He reads one post that claims he lives close by, so he sent the media their home address and a picture of the house. Hero replies to this post saying that he will kill him. They all call him a troll but he suddenly says found you, I'm coming now. We cut to one of the users, laughing at Hiro, calling him insane, saying he will kick his ass, when suddenly, a live video of Hiro appears on his screen. He then asks him if he knows what he's about to do to him, and then he shoots him in the leg. The 2chan user, crying out in pain, then says it was just a prank bro. 
just a bit of trolling with the boys, claiming that he didn't actually send anything to the media. When Hero pulls up the emails that he sent, after this, the user recoils in fear, calling out for help. Hero messes with him by shooting around him, till he gets a cover but, thinking he is safe not being in the line of sight, says fuck you and your mother. But Hero appears on the laptop in front of him, shooting and killing him. He then uploads the footage to 2chan to the shock of all users, before stating that he is now going to kill them all in the order they posted. And of course, humans took it seriously and stopped mocking an actual nut serial killer. A businessman on the train station starts laughing and saying show me how you gonna kill me mother f And then the mother f showed up. And this dude is actually pulling his middle fingers up to a serial killer. And this one was actually using his company Mac to make memes, like my friend Josh, trolling the serial killer in the middle of the meeting. It didn't take time till the screams and blood became the only thing that people could see in a mall, a park, a train, school, library, and even your homie's room. 